Yo, yo, it's ODB from OLP. This is issue 115 of Mini Trucking Magazine, July of 2001. It's a damn good one. I do have a quick update. I talked to Jason Redden. Uh, I messaged him and we were chatting. Uh, I was having um, a brain fart yesterday when I did this flip through. I couldn't figure out which wheels these were and... They, of course, we looked, and they are the Palisades, I believe, Colorado Custom Palisades. So um, thanks to Jason. If you saw the video, you saw uh, that I asked, and typically I have all this information in my database, and I got this issue mixed up with June 2001. So again, we got that sorted out. No need uh, to figure out what wheels are on that truck. So that's how it goes here, right? It's a group effort, as I always say. So basically, we got Pimp Daddy of the Month, J.J. Warren. Uh, he lived in Vegas, a.k.a. Sin City. Uh, this is his sick 99 Tacoma. Now, Finnegan, this is his first uh, shoot. Uh, he shot this one, of course, in Las Vegas. The model, which is presumably his friend or was his friend or, you know, girlfriend, uh, Allison Alleycat Scribner. Uh, again, this was Finnegan's first uh, cover shoot. Uh, which was pretty cool. Um, stick with me till the end. I'll talk about how many covers he shot for Mini Truck, and that actually might amaze you. A couple of other things. This is the eighth cover with KMC Wheels. It was the fourth cover for Severed Ties. It's the 33rd Toyota on the cover, but only the third Tacoma. I think the Red's Hydraulics cover that had multi-trucks. It had a white Tacoma towards the left. And then, of course, you had David Wiltz that we saw recently. Those were the previous two. Uh, but this is a super cool issue. Uh, many of us can think back to the scene. It was really popping off here. You had a beautiful model, girlfriend, woman, whatever you want to say, on the cover. Uh, this truck sticks out to me for a couple of reasons. Uh, you can see there a pretty cool background. And you see the KMC wheels on it there. Las Vegas roller with the dice looking pretty dope. Uh, let's jump in. Some of these entries get a little bit long, so appreciate you guys sticking with us. Watch till the end if you can. Uh, if you have to come back and you know add it to your watch list so you can you know finish watching it later, it helps us out. Alter Images, again featuring Alter Ego. And this one was changed a little bit because if you remember the last issue, it said featuring Alter Ego. They, of course, swapped it up a little bit. So uh, pretty cool. You can see Burnt Taco there. Mike Finnegan's. Uh, this right here is uh, where I got some of the the lead in there, uh, the Pimp Daddy of the Month. You can see the Tacoma there, JJ, his friend or girlfriend. And this was always a cool uh, spot in Vegas to me. I always thought this was a pretty cool feature because you had the artwork. Um up there above, which is pretty dang cool. What, you know, totally different, you know, a different type of shoot in terms of that photo there than we've seen before. Uh, here you have the table of contents. We can kind of see it continuing to change. Here it goes um, over into like basically like two pages. Maybe the first time we see two pages. We can see uh, a couple of trucks here that we'll talk about, including rest in peace to Jason Weiss's friend. Uh, Jason Weiss now uh, owns this truck. We had him on the podcast. Wow, it seems like forever ago. Shout out to Jay Weiss and all the kinfolk down south. Um, good people. Uh, change is good. So um, basically what Lance talks about here is uh, a couple of things, but mostly just talking about how they're going to kind of pretty much have the pedal stomped and they're going to... Um, you know, there's going to continue to be some little bit of evolution. You, you'll you see more in the next issue. He kind of kind of mentions that, talks about how it's just jam-packed. And then here you can see as well, um, so what we are doing to make, so what are we doing to make Mini Truck and Stand head and shoulders above the rest of the custom truck publications out there? For starters, just flip through the pages of this issue. So again, we've kind of seen a few changes. You know, Finnegan comes on board, um, table of contents changing a little bit. Uh, Lance, obviously drawing in some different kind of features and things like that. So that's what he talks about there. You guys remember this truck? Toyota. Pro Street. 
good stuff here. Uh, we're still not all color, believe it or not. Um, and I know I, you guys probably think, why do you keep bringing that up? It's just kind of amazing to me that, you know, you think about now, everything's color, right? Uh, but publications, even in 01, weren't. 21 quarts of oil, two burnt hands, and one psycho semi life in the fat lane, which was the title of Finnegan's uh, column there. Cabin Fever, five months to perfection. This thing was super sick. I want to say that I saw it at Indie Truck Bash back in the day. Um, it reminded me of, I think it was Ryan Conkren's uh, Mazda, if I remember the name correctly. Sometimes this stuff just pops in my head. Uh, the unique thing about this truck, and some of you and most of you probably already know, number one, it's a unibody. Two, it's uh, a walkthrough. So you have that pretty awesome feel of your rear passengers living topless right so pretty cool there's tweed for days i would take it all it's the era that i love a lot love it a lot here you can see some pretty cool interior work there you get the motorcycle mirrors the french antenna and a rare issue that i own that is missing that the subscription card here's summer slam 2 again if you like what we're doing here check us out olp via any podcast app just search those three letters typically that's going to be your first search result and this is the street boutique one i believe tuck and 20s that we saw recently in show coverage this thing looks crazy these s10s look nuts with these grills like that um, really gave it a different appearance. But, um, you know, search OLP. You can go to ourlifestylepodcast.com, buy some merch. Uh, you can also find ways to listen there if you're just like a one-click type person. You can see the, it looks like HRBB wheels there. There's the S10. Daryl Logan's S10. I forget if that one actually might have been, there's a couple different ones. This might be the one that was on the cover of Mini Trucking. There's a couple couple yellow S10s that come to mind, too, that I can think of. But, um, yeah, buy some merch uh, if you want. And, uh, of course, we've got the old school paying homage to the OG mini trucking logo. And um, you can also find ways to listen there if you just want to click the link. Hitting bottom. This was Daryl. And... Daryl. It says Daryl. Sometimes try to pick up on that. Was this um, Daryl Poe? I don't think so. Was it? Maybe it was. Maybe not. Sometimes uh, th with the, the change in... Because West Virginia, I was thinking Daryl. Didn't Daryl have an S10? A little more than a year ago, Daryl had enough with others building killer rides. Uh, the reason why I say that is no slight against them. It's just sometimes when the features were being done, they would sometimes leave out maybe a name or a year make model, that type of stuff. But rock bottom, there you, there you go. West Virginia with the, the eight letters on their license plates as well, I believe. North Carolina and West, and West Virginia, right? Eight characters. But uh, if you can leave a comment, really appreciate it. Leave a thumbs up. Leave an emoji. John Coulter. I believe how you say it. His Mazdog from Killicali. Topless. Man, dude. Timeless. In my opinion. Too low for Cal. K-A-L. And what do we have here? Charles Armstrong. Been waiting to get to this one for a while. Semi fours. Now, it's funny because in my mind, I'm like, I already went through this issue. How can this con under construction? I did jump ahead. The only one I've jumped ahead on um, when we launched Time Machine Merchandise a year ago at Mini Nats. I went through that issue just to tie in. So I guess technically, um, this is the issue 115, but we've already went over the future issue. We've went into the future, folks, and we're back. We're back from the future. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. 
but this is Charles Armstrong's uh, truck after the rebuild. You got the, the Budnick wheels on it. It's a rare glimpse at some of the behind the scenes. I mean, really, you didn't get it. I haven't seen many behind the scene photos. Uh, shout out to Charles. I talk with him every couple months. And there is that famous, just insane, one of the greatest bridges of all time. That um, cross member is just insane. I've got some cool photos I've taken of it on film. Uh, but dude, just truly an amazing truck. And obviously Lance and, and Charles have a great relationship over the years. And this truck got all the credit it was deserved. And so happy to have it a part of OLP-verse, you know, the OLP universe, so to speak. And we launched those shirts, that merchandise rather, 20 years, almost 20 years to the to the show, uh, Mini Nats 2002. And of course, it was uh, finished in 2002. So we, we launched it, Mini Nats 2022. Yeah. Here's Mini Laughter. So brought to... Brought to... Yeah, yeah, I'm going to have to grab my other issue because look what I've done. This issue here, I have uh, three, I want to say three copies of this. And I got to this and I'm like, wait a minute, where's Mini Laughter? And I can see <laughs> the staples right here. So I'll go ahead and finish this up when I grab the other issue because we are missing, you know, typically the center section is going to be where the feature's at. Like Jerry rig everything. Okay, so if I wouldn't have, my mind wouldn't have wandered. So when I flip to this page, I see it looks like the staple's missing. And I'm like, okay, we're at the center section. That's an easy answer, right? I go here, I'm like, okay, well, up close. So we're missing the feature, looks like, right? Well, go out to the shop, grab my other issue. Hmm, did I take it out of both? Nope just the way it was put together for this issue. So go over here, boom, there you go. And there it is without the label on it. So anyways, back to the program already in progress. So yeah, basically mini laughter was kind of brought up to uh, the center section here, obviously with mini laughter, my, or, you know, the discussion was probably like, hey, let's uh, let's switch it up. Let's bring some more of the lifestyle type stuff in there. Speaking of drinks, lifestyle, mini truckers, partying hard. You can see there the famous truck, MIC built that was on the cover of Truckin'. You can see the, the rig in the background. Now, um, some of the homies, uh, including Charles Wickman, thanks, homie. He texted me last night, and one of the photos that I shared in the last issue with Brett, he said, hey, I took that photo, and he kind of gave me the backstory. So, um, you know, you guys are commenting. People hit me up via text and stuff, and they go, yo, check this out. Uh, here's some more intel for you. So I love doing these flip-throughs because, you know, not only are you guys enjoying them, but um, it's bringing new stories to light. And you can see here the interview which again the ladies were getting the love wow we just got spanked hard by that dealer what's up with that and that's how it starts you can see there a cool photo but um pretty cool stuff now again you would think by looking at this that maybe the center fold was removed and it wasn't it's just the way this issue kind of came together is the way i'll say it uh, Las Vegas Roller at Tacoma with all the right moves. Now, I'm going to try not to say something for a minute. That's kind of hard. Do you? What do you guys remember about this truck? Is there anything that sticks out to you that's different? Okay. The thing that I always remember about this, and it's no slight against this truck. It's just what it is. It's a cool mod. You may like it. You may not. The thing that I remember about this, and keep me honest, is that the wheel wells are lengthened. You can see this right here. Kind of re, you know, I'm not a metal guy, 
but it, it's basically kind of like reshaped, right? You know, a lot of times the old Lincolns that I'm into, you know, people talk about the wheel wells, how iconic those wheel wells are. Uh, these were reshaped. That's what I remember about it. One of the things I remember, number two is, or the first thing is the awesome cover. I think it's sick. Uh, cool little photo there. And you can see, again, here's what you also, here's what else I always remember. This was a cool uh, feature to hang on the wall. It's a, what appears to be a real rolling shot. Um, and again, Finnegan's first credited cover, which is awesome. Uh, this was always a fantastic photo to me. You had the girl kneeling down. The truck looks awesome just with the, the shadowing and kind of the sunset wherever it was at. Um, the background, super sick. You get the little hood scoop. You got the tweed on the headliner, some of the sculpturing. Super clean engine bay. I mean, this is a high-end build truck, and we didn't see this very often. They put it up on jack stands to show underneath. Not only is this truck badass on top, thing is sick from the inside out. Interior, engine bay, undercarriage, everything. This, this thing had everything. And actually... Just to reinforce, I actually dig this mod. You know, it was something totally different. And with these wheels, fire. What do you guys think? Um, to me, this truck, to me, laid awesome. I mean, these trucks always laid pretty hard. A lot of times, you know, boom, right on that pinch weld. But, uh, I mean, that thing was low. It's badass. So, tip of the cap to JJ for building just such a, such a sick truck. Um, I liked... Um, I liked these interviews, but at the same time, I think we lost a little bit of information in terms of the feature itself. I, I would have liked if they did this, but then they would have like the, which we'll see in the non-cover trucks, you'll have the section that provides all of the detail. Uh, here, there's some detail. Chuck and I body dropped the truck five inches. Crazy Customs dropped the cab three and a quarter, things like that. You know, they talk about some of the stuff. But obviously, they're trying to get their footing. They're trying to, you know, get down, you know, what do people like. And uh, super sick truck. Waves of the future, so shock waves. I do believe that these things really helped bring a lot of the hot rider guys kind of on board. Uh, you know, bolt-in type applications. There's the truck we saw last month with the feature. Uh, this is old school airbag kind of 101 stuff for, for some of the younger kinfolk. Uh, you'll see right here, you got, a dual, you got the... Um, the gauge someone's calling you got the uh single needle gauges with the four up and down so and then you had all your lines coming in there which a lot of times you don't you don't really have lines coming in uh the cab and you know uh the cars the the cabin anymore and the reason for that is simply because you know with these valves and stuff you typically have digital systems now so you don't have to run all of the lines and have extra unions all of that stuff leads sometimes to more leaks um it's not that you can't get the leaks out don't get me wrong but it is what it is so low rolling um this is end of summer bash shout out to phil and all the kinfolk this truck we saw at nopi back in the day this was uh, a total ruse um i believe steve at alter they built this truck for a guy that was out of out of New York. Okay, I'm thinking of a different, I'm thinking of a full-size truck. I apologize. There was a full-size truck from Acro that I think ran a New York tag. And it wasn't from New York. It always confused me because this is a green truck from New York that was built by Alter Images, I believe. And he had a New York tag and we saw it at Nopi. I don't know how I remember all that, but digging it. And uh, I don't know whatever happened. I would hope that that truck is in someone's garage. Phil... Anybody from up there know that thing is sick. Here we can see one of the rare photos of Lomigo. Uh, we know the history. Shout out to Rob. I know Rob always watches. We've had Rob on the podcast. There's Lomigo when it was in the northeast. Super sick blazer. It seems like I know which one. This one maybe became the one with graphics. Those wheels look similar with that hood. Again, this was in an era. Era when people were going big or going home and you had people doing crazy body drops you could see the hood um people were really starting to push the limits with how low they could make these trucks and whatnot and uh sometimes the hood scoops got pretty big 
here again is Ashton's Ashton, his um, blazer that we just recently saw. I think that thing has been up in hiding maybe 20, 20 years. And I'm trying to get this thing to re kind of focus because sometimes after I zoom in, it kind of plays tricks on us a little bit. Here's Time to Shine. So you got the S10 Toyota. And here we saw this at the table of contents a little bit there, that famous truck. Here's something pretty cool, Bohm S10 topless. You didn't see a lot, you saw some, but not a lot of those, the, those body styles. There's a few out there. Speaking of, there's another one right there, which you can't, it's hard to tell. Is that the same truck? Let's see if there's some um, light. So that's extended cab. There's two people. Yeah, that is. Cause look, you can see the guy with the, with the white hair, bleached hair. So pretty cool. And there it is again. Waiting to exhale. Nice Dakota that we've seen before. So this was, I believe his name was Joe. I'm trying to go from memory, Weiss. Um, we saw this truck at this show. This was at Blood Drag back in the day. And I'm going to go ahead and come over here real quick. Joe Maloney, right there in the middle. Wave maker. When this thing came out, this thing definitely made some waves. This thing is super sick. We, um, this is one of the first stories I can remember where someone went in Mini Truck and where are they now? And this truck was in South Florida. Someone found it in Washington State, like in dilapidated. And Weiss was able to get it back. He's friends with Joe. Joe's no longer with us. Rest in peace, Joe Maloney. I still remember talking to Weiss about it. Uh, this thing was cool because not only was it low, it's got a great stance. The grill looks great. S uh, sliding rag. But look at the rag top and look at the seats. Plaid. That was something totally different, at least in our scene. You know, maybe VWs, maybe other guys. But, dude, this this truck had it all. The stereo, look how nice. The dash pod. Um, the inside of the bed, which it's kind of hard to see here. These are, um, I guess, presumably polished aluminum. Um, bead rolled. Or not bead rolled, but um, all cut in there perfectly. It was something like when we walked up on this truck, we're like, damn, this thing is different. Uh, Two-page feature, but dude, super, super clean. And uh, rest in peace, Joe. It's got that 60s surf inspired, which it talks about. It's got plenty of tweed. And this was shot at Blood Drag uh, February 01. And here you go, what I was talking about earlier, load, the lowdown. Uh, a lot of trucks were shot right here in front of that um, that wood fence. I was there to see some of these, not this one. My friend Tom Bennett, his blazer was shot almost in the same spot. Uh, Travis shot some vehicles there, which actually, Travis shot this one. I may have been there and just don't remember it or I was out of film. Um, I think I would remember it. I got a good memory, but um, I was there see, and I saw a lot of uh, uh, features shot right there. So rest in peace, Joe Maloney. Shout out to Weiss and all the kinfolk, like I said, down there. Uh, here is the Tampa show. This was a year that we had a damn good time. Uh, a couple things I'll point out here. This Izuzu, Matt would have to chime in. Was this Anthony's aunt's old Izuzu? I can't remember. There was one that you that Matt had worked on, the suicide um, gas door and things like that. I don't know if it was that one. He can chime in. Maybe he'll remember. Uh, there's the Tacoma. Was friends with Danler. That guy's still around. Um, Dennis's old S10. I love this thing. I'd love to find it. It's got my old bench seat in it. I traded for the buckets that are in Bada Bing. Here's rest in peace, Rob Scepter. I remember we parked on this section right here. My truck was back here. Uh, Chris had the full size. Um, there's the Isuzu again. Here's Donnie's truck we just saw recently. This thing was sick from local. You can see Eric crying. His Tacoma there, 99 and Dragon. This thing was sick. It had uh, the Mazda Miata door handles. 
Some of you guys will remember these trucks. Here's Marlon Dunker's S10. He lives about 10 minutes from me. For those that do not know, that is Marlon Dunker's Dime, one of the cleanest built, one of the nicest trucks built. Courtney shot it, early street trucks. Circa 2001 it ran. I think it was shot at 2000 Pigeon Forge. And you can see there, 99 and Dragon, Eric Cryan's amazing truck, recently sold it. One of the baddest Tacomas built. It was featured in street trucks and more on that. I don't think I've done that feature yet on the channel. So I hope that you guys appreciate, you know, sometimes my brain gets going, especially if it's a show that I was at or, you know, know some of the trucks around. You guys know I love to add the commentary. The Innovator. So an Izuzu. Really clean truck. These things look really good with a roll pan like that with the, the tag right there. Good stuff. Clean. We're going to keep on keeping on with these issues. We certainly appreciate, uh, I appreciate all the support. Even though we've gotten to monetization, you have to understand a channel like ours, I mean, I could do videos for months and months and months and it doesn't, it's not really a lot of money, but it is kind of cool that, um, that it's something, even if it's pennies. Um, we'll continue to grow the content here like we did on the podcast and, uh, life will be good. We'll continue to keep it on, keep it on. Kenny Jones, Baltimore. Uh, we're getting ready for Mini Nats 2023, depending on when you're watching this. You might be watching it way in the future. If you are, shout out. Go back and check them all out. See a lot of cool stuff in graffiti. I like kind of going through this slow, if I remember to. No regrets. Check that out. Maybe the f early time we would see, excuse me, the logo in the mag. Marchese? Is that his, maybe? I was saying the name wrong for so long. I feel good that I can say it right. It looks like the MIC on the back changed up a little bit, which is cool. So there you have it. What did I say? 115. And uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool cover. Uh, a couple things, again, just to point out that I want to reinforce with everyone is this is Mike Finnegan's first credited shoot. Uh, but check this out. Believe it or not, he only shot... How many covers was it? I'm trying to think. It was... I think he got credited with three or four total. Um, and that's kind of crazy to me. It's kind of like... Just like if you think about Courtney wasn't the... Recipes to Courtney. He wasn't the editor for very long. Because remember, we went through those nine issues or so... And then they went over to Street Truck. So Finnegan did a lot for the magazine. That's no slight against them. But I think it's sometimes crazy to think that someone only shot X amount of covers. You know, I think of someone being tied to the magazine like, oh, they, you know, they would have did this. Like sometimes I'll ask someone, how many, who do you think shot the most covers? And they'll give me the name of 10 people that weren't even close to shooting the most. So again, it's just one of those little things. But it was uh, three or four. And I'll clarify that more in the future. This was Severed High's fourth cover, of course. It's a damn good truck, or badass truck. Awesome cover. Cute lady. Stay on the rise, y'all. Thanks for the support. Subscribe. We out to you.